Hey everybody, Jenna here. Um, so I've been doing some research. Um, I'm going to be very transparent on my channel about what I'm going through in my life, how I've ended up where I am, and my experiences. So I've done a lot of self-reflection and I know the what's, the where's, the how's, and maybe why I've turned out the way that I have been. So um, a little bit of transparency. Um, I've struggled with an eating disorder my whole life, really. I think I went on my first diet at 13, and it really wasn't because I was so concerned with my weight or my fear of being fat. It's because of childhood trauma, and that's a whole topic for a different day. So there's certain things I needed to control and certain traits that I brought into my adulthood, but what I'm finding is that through self-reflection and really trying to get out of my head and trying to really literally get out of my house, I wanted to see um, and understand. Um, part of when you have childhood trauma is the need to have to understand. It makes sense to logic, especially when you have complex PTSD. And that's, like I said, a whole different story for a different day. And I had to make sense of it. I had to make sense of it so I could explain it and live with it and hopefully prevent some of those triggers and things that have been happening throughout my life. So um, I have not left my house very much for the last two years. So I don't really feel good about myself. And so the last couple of weeks, something flipped in my mind where I am okay my opinion matters. At the end of the day, I don't want to be judged on my appearance. I don't want to be judged by superficial things. And I feel like this world that we live in now is so superficial. We have labels. We put people in a box. And maybe this has always been this way. And I grew up in the Midwest, so I was somewhat sheltered and somewhat naive. And some of that led to me developing certain things and um, overlooking, not being aware of, or over even looking some red flags in my life because of that. So I think sometimes the way we're brought up are socioeconomic factors, um, things that we have happened in our families, in our lives, really do transform our outlook. So I know as a child, I was brought up in the Midwest. You know, we weren't very active. Half the year it was hot and half the year it was cold. So we shut, were shut in. Um, I didn't know anything about what a diet looked like. I didn't know what calories were. I didn't know what fat milk was versus skim milk. I just ate what my parents put in front of me. The rule was what was on your plate, you were going to finish it or you'd sit there until it was gone. And, you know, I grew up with casseroles. Everything had cheese and cream and mushroom soup in it. And I was grateful. I didn't know. I didn't eat because it was comfort food. I didn't eat because I was really necessarily hungry. I was never really hungry. And, you know, we had dessert after every meal. It was a privilege. It was something that was delightful. And that was just something that we did within my family. But I was a chunky monkey when I was a kid. You know, when I started to get older, I, you know, I hit pu puberty early. I developed, you know, what were pretty decent breasts early on. And I got some feedback and got teased about that. Just like people in my class that were flat chested and were late bloomers got teased about other things. You know, some people got teased because they had glasses or they didn't have the right shoes. They didn't have the right last name. They didn't have. That's what people got picked on for. You know, I also grew up when, you know, if boys liked you, they hit you, which is a crazy concept, right? You know, if they give you attention, negative attention still means they're giving you attention. And then you grow up in life, and if a boy hits you, that's abuse. So what a conflicting world we live in. So right now, I'm, you know, trying to figure this all out. You know, why are we all so judgmental based on appearances? You know, when I look at people, and maybe I'm unusual, but this is how I keep myself healthy. When I see somebody, I'm not looking at what they're wearing. I'm not looking at how much they weigh. I'm not looking if they have makeup or not. I'm looking at 
their skills, how they communicate, what vibe they give off, what their personality is, right? You know, I've met some very attractive people that had the ugliest personalities. You know, I've met people that maybe society would deem as not being attractive that were the best people to be around. So I'm having a really hard time why everybody is being so stereotypical and judgmental. So I'm a little thinner, you know, as I got a little bit older, I um, developed a healthier lifestyle. I moved out of the Midwest and I moved to California. I wasn't very active because I'm not the most coordinated kiddo. So I did not play sports. Now I was a cheerleader. I was active in a whole bunch of different ways. And I was active in so many other different activities for very different reasons, but I wasn't very active. I wasn't physically fit when I moved to California. And that's a whole different story and reason why I did that. But it was warm every day of the year. Um, I got myself in a social circle where I became a runner at, you know, when I hit adulthood, I decided that I'd like to do, like to run. I liked the way it made me feel. It was a good way to clear my mind. It was a great adrenaline rush at the end, no lie. And then I also felt physically fit. When I did that, I started to adopt a healthier lifestyle. Now the eating disorder was still at play, but at least my weight was more consistent. I felt it was more under control. Um, so I was also married to a Marine and I've got quite a saga in relation to that, but my circle of friends, they were all physically fit, right? You know, um, that was expected. We all went out and did things. We all um, were out in the community. Um, I remember walking at the beach. I remember going for for runs with my kids. Even my son used to get on his bicycle and ride his bicycle next to me when I ran. Um, my circle of friends, we did a 5K or a 10K once or twice a month, and that was great, and I felt good, and that was my sense of community. So I made that that choice. And when I was physically active, then I wasn't so preoccupied with my weight. So right now I'm looking at, you know, what fat people experience. And I'm also looking at maybe what thin people experience. And there seems to be varying opinions and a lot of judgmental when we should be really not really looking at weight as such a big factor. Yeah. Should people take a look at their health. Should people be more mindful about um, the impression they're making? Yeah, but it's not all about the outward picture. It's about what's on the inside and what they bring to a situation. So I'm struggling with this. I feel, um, and I know not everybody feels this way. I'm just talking about what I've seen, what I've heard, because like I said, for Right now in my life, I'm pretty much sheltered and I've had to do that for safety and to take some time to really work on me. I needed to separate myself from the world for a minute to be able to do that. But, you know, I feel really bad about being thin sometimes. And I feel bad that other people would be offended by it. You know, I'm not thin because I'm trying to impress anybody. I'm not thin because I want the world to give me things. You know, I guess if I knew that that was something that could be done or this whole concept of thin privilege or pretty privilege, I didn't even know that was a thing. Gosh, maybe I could have exploited it, but that's new to me. You know, when I got jobs, I did it because I worked hard. I had a good resume. I sold myself because of what I could contribute. It wasn't based on what I look like. And I think that's the misconception. You know, I've done a lot of program development. I've had large staffs, you know, and I've interviewed people. It's about the, the way we communicate. What kind of worker will they be? Will they be reliable? Do they have the right skill set? Are they trainable? Are they open minded? Are they committed? Will they be good in the role? It wasn't because of what they look like or what their weight was. That would be wrong. That would be judgmental. I don't want to be judged. So why should I judge someone else? 
So I see all these TikToks and all of these YouTube videos about, well, if you're thin, you're fat phobic. If you work out, you're fat phobic because you're so afraid of being fat. No, that's not it. I've never been like that. And I'm not trying to speak for everyone else, but I did it because I felt better about myself. I felt healthier and it gave me something that when I did look in the mirror, I felt comfortable with myself. You know, I've, you know, fluctuated in weight at times. There was a time when I was 89 pounds and that was ridiculous. And at that time I didn't see it. When I looked in the mirror, you know, because when we do have those eating disorders, whether it be anorexia or it may be been like a disordered eating, we don't really see who we, what other people see in us. So right now I'm a single lady. I look at myself in the mirror. I don't see my size because I don't have anything to point a reference to. I don't have anybody standing next to me to compare myself to. So I look absolutely fine. Um, in my circle of friends, you know, in California, and I lived around people that were all about my same size, you know, um, I learned to adapt. So it was interesting when I moved back to the Midwest, you know, I did have people who say, oh my gosh, you're so thin. Well, that was surprising because in California and in my circle of friends, the runners, the military lifestyle, everybody kind of looked like me. I kind of felt like the bigger one sometimes. You know, sometimes I was the heavier friend. You know, I never really sized myself up. Now, I know we women can be catty. And I have had people be mean to me because they presumed I would be a certain way because of my size or looking through some of these videos that people perceive that I'm going to have an easier ride or an easier life or be more confident or exploit things because of the way I look. And that is so not true. Um, I have not always worn makeup. This is new for me. I put it on when I'm trying to get myself to look in the mirror for two years. I've avoided that. You know, I was wearing flannel pajamas. I was sitting in the dark. I wasn't doing my hair. I wasn't taking very good care of myself. And I certainly wasn't wearing makeup. So this is me pushing myself out of the comfort zone so I can be comfortable and positive within my own body. So I started to, when I started to do these videos, use the phrase body positive. Well, now I'm finding I really probably shouldn't be doing that because now I'm not supposed to be doing that and I don't understand. My concept of body positivity is being comfortable within myself. It's not so everybody else can be positive with me. I got to be good with myself at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, you know, I am not going to be defined on my tombstone where it says she weighed 100 pounds. Um, she was thin. Um, she had nice shoes. No, it's going to be the impression that I made on this world. And for a while, I've been a little bit lost. I didn't think that I could make a positive effect. And I'm hoping that you guys will give me a chance to share my story and that some folks will be inspired and maybe can even relate to it. I felt like I was unique and I thought I was broken and um, I felt pretty darn bad about myself and I'm coming out of that funk again. I've had periods of life like that, but I'm really trying to make a difference. My road has not been easy. Um, my life journey has been filled with potholes and speed bumps. Sometimes I don't have any direction planned and sometimes I'm so stuck I don't go in any direction, but I'm really trying to figure out my way. So I'm hoping that somebody, and I hope you guys will like, subscribe, and follow because I've got a, quite a story. I always say I'm going to have a, you know, a book to write or be a terrible lifetime movie. But really, to be quite honest, it's so unbelievable. I don't think it would even sell the lifetime. So it's full of just weird experiences. And while some of them are scary, some of them are embarrassing, I think that it will be liberating for me to share my side because I think I've been judged a lot. I think people don't understand, you know, because I'm a fairly intelligent person for the most part that because I was, a I was naive and trusting. And I think I made some decisions in life for the best of intentions. Um, I think people, 
don't always understand. And I think if I get to share my side and you get to see me in the eyes, if you give me the chance, you'll understand that I came from a good place when I made decisions. So um, back to the topic at hand, you know, I, I think people only see things from their seat. So I know that people that are overweight are judged, but there are some times where people who are underweight are also judged. Um, but what I've learned is if you don't like something, you change it. I would never in a million years ask the world to conform and change for me. You know, if I don't fit somewhere, I just go somewhere else or I'm, I'm learning to do that. There's been a lot of my life where I have been trying to fit in, um, figure out where I do belong. And it's scary. It's been me being fake and not really being true to myself. So I'm trying to learn who I really am. And if people don't like me, you know, you can't please everybody all the time. It's okay. You know, I might be judged not only because I'm thin, I have tattoos. I've decided that I like tattoos. It's artistic expression. Everyone is special to me. But in some places, some people's opinions, some generations, maybe that's deviant. Maybe they judge me based on that. And I'll give you an example. My son, oh my God, I'm so proud. He married the love of his life, this most delightful young lady from a big Catholic family. And it didn't occur to me um, at their wedding in a Catholic church that maybe I should be more modest. I'm kind of thin and I'm not ashamed of my body and I do have tattoos. It was August in the Midwest. It was hot. So, you know, I'm not going to put on, I guess, what would be a traditional mother of the groom outfit. First of all, I couldn't find one that would fit me. I'm small. I wear a size zero or zero, zero. So it's hard for me to find clothes like other people struggle to find clothes. So I wore a long, blue dress. I thought it was appropriate. I pulled my hair back, but I did have tattoos. And I'll let you know, although it might have been um, something that people judge me by, I walked into the Catholic church and the church did not burn down. No blood was shed. Um, I may have embarrassed folks. I may have made others uncomfortable, but I was true to who I am. So you're never going to please everybody all the time. You know, and you're not going to be able to change people's perceptions. For example, I don't want people to like me because I think that they're being judgmental. So right now there's this movement is um, you shouldn't be fat phobic. And if you don't want to date somebody that's heavier set, then you are fat phobic and you're wrong. Well, everybody has preferences. You know, some people like people with bigger breasts. I don't have them. Some people apparently like that. And if they don't like it, that's okay. I'm not going to change myself to please someone else. I am grateful that I don't have big boobs. I prayed as a child not to have them. And I was graced with that thing fully. But, you know, if people don't like me, I don't want to force them to like me. So there are things that I don't like in men. You know, I'm not particularly attracted to a certain type. And if I don't like them, that's okay. You know, somebody else will. And this concept that we have to force people to change to fit our needs, to make us feel better about ourselves, I feel like is where we're erring wrong in society. You know, I'm not going to be comfortable absolutely everywhere I go. If I go to a shoe store, for example, and they don't have a size seven, half or an eight, which I wear, I go somewhere else. Or if they don't have that size and the style that I want, I find something else. You know, if I don't go to a store and they, I mean, in the, okay, this may sound a little stereotypical, but people tend to be on a spectrum of sizes that most people fit into. So there aren't a lot of people that are my size. So I know what stores I can find clothes that fit me. So I go there. 
Now, I'm not going to go blatantly into a store where I know they're not going to have my clothes. First of all, I have enough shopping experience where I know those things, but I'm not going to go into a plus size store and make a mockery or make a scene because I know they're not going to have my size. That's ridiculous. So I feel like we should focus on the things that work and not be so hypersensitive to the things that don't. So we can't expect people to make hallways wider if we don't fit. You know, we can't expect the airlines to change the seats to accommodate everybody. You know, the seats on the airplane aren't comfortable for me either. I used to take my kids to Disneyland. I know what rides were uncomfortable for me because I was smaller, so I just didn't go on those. We have to fit. You know, if you don't fit, just don't go. Now, if you're comfortable with the way you are, that is fantastic. So don't judge me because I'm finally being comfortable within myself. You know, if you feel healthy and it works for you, we should all have a positive outlook. Those people that are empowered, that find a group that they feel accepted in, that's wonderful. But don't exclude me because of my outward appearance. I bring other contributions to the table. I was a therapist. Maybe we can talk about things. Maybe we can share things. Maybe we can compare notes. We're not so indifferent. So this article that I found, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to scroll it down. So let me see if I can figure it out here because I think I veered off the path. So it talks about, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to, I don't know how to get it to work. So one of the things that they focused on, and I've seen a lot of people saying that when they go to the doctor, there is a bias. Um, they go and they're so offended that people ask them about their weight. They ask everybody about the weight. Don't be so sensitive about it. That's their job. They have a series of questions. Just like when I was a therapist, I had questions that I had to ask. I didn't ask people if they were using drugs because they looked thin. That's I asked the same people the same questions so I could do rule outs. That's why they take your blood pressure to see if that could potentially be a problem. They ask the basics. So with an eating disorder, I learned a very long time that I don't get on the scale. I don't look in the mirror. I don't let it define me because it will, it will ruin my day no matter what that, because of whatever number shows up on that scale, like that determines if I have a good day or a bad day or what my image of myself will be. So I've learned certain things. So when I go to the doctor and they ask to weigh me, I just respectfully decline. I just say, no, I don't weigh myself. And I, they still ask me every single time, but I respectfully decline and they respect that. Now they may ask me what I weigh and, and I'm always honest about it because I've been with the same medical group for a really long time. But in the past, I've been to a medical provider that was unfamiliar with me. And if I didn't like them, I found a new doctor. So if you don't like them, find a new doctor. It's kind of like when you have a therapist. Some people you feel safe with, some people you can talk to, some you can't. You don't like them, you find a new one. Nobody's forcing you to go there. And if you feel strongly about something, you need to advocate for it. So, you know, medical people only know what they know. So they size you up because they have certain things that gives them a point of direction in which to proceed to ask questions. So even um, in a therapeutic setting, you more likely than not have these scenarios, right? So even with the DSM-5 where you're, you can give somebody a label, which isn't always fair, you kind of narrow down areas that you need to work on. So if I'm heavier and I'm walking in there saying my knees hurt or my back hurts or um, my blood pressure's high, my cholesterol's high, I'm sluggish and I can't get around, more likely than not, they're going to start there. Now, you have the right to advocate for yourself and say, well, it could be something else. And if you don't like what they have to say, you find someone else, right? Or you don't blame it on biases. You know, some people don't know what they don't know. If you're new to them, they're just trying to get the essentials because they probably have seen 100 people that day. Um, they're not singling you out. They're doing what they're trained to do, right? So... When I walk in and I say, I'm tired, I'm sluggish, you know, they start with a whole blood work. They look at my, my 
caloric intake. They look at my weight. I had one nurse in one clinic say, oh my God, you look like you're from Ethiopia. This is a long time ago, clearly, because I was so thin. And I took great offense in that. You know, I don't appreciate being labeled. I didn't appreciate the comment that I also chalked it up to some people just don't have tact. Some people don't have a filter. Some people aren't polished and some people say things they wish they could take back. I know I have slips at times and I hope I'm not offending anybody now, but sometimes we say things that can be misconstrued. Right. And so we need to toughen up, you know, not everybody is focused on you. I know that at times of my life where I wasn't feeling good about myself or I thought the world was gossiping about me, I moved back to a small town. I liked living in a large city. I am a city girl living in a small town. I liked the anonymity. I liked that I didn't know my neighbors, that nobody really paid attention to me. Then I moved back to a small town where I grew up and it felt like everybody was paying attention. It was because I was so self-conscious that I thought everybody else was paying attention to me and that I was drawing attention to myself, even though I really wasn't intending to. So when you walk into a room and everybody looks, that's what we all do, correct? Right? Because there's motion. Now, sometimes we may look and see what they're doing, but really, then we go back to whatever it was. I would walk into, for example, my daughter's sports events or her concerts at school and really be self-conscious that when I walked in and had to walk up the bleachers and find a seat that everybody was looking at me, they really weren't. I was moving. They might be looking to see who I am, but their focus really was not on me. They were looking just because they were looking, but then they would focus back on whatever the activity was. I was being self-centered and I was making life difficult for myself. Now, I'm also not going to walk into a room and draw inadvertent attention to myself. I'm going to dress appropriately most of the time for the occasion. You know, I don't wear makeup when I go out. I'm wearing makeup now because it gives me something to do. And because I'm on screen, I don't want to look like I'm pale and pasty because I don't have a tan because I haven't been outside of my house for two years. But I'm also not going to draw unnecessary attention. I might wear a sports bra and yoga pants in my house and I feel comfortable in it. I have tattoos because I like to show them off, but I'm not going to go to church in a sports bra and yoga pants. I'm not going to go to Walmart and wear a sports bra and yoga pants and slippers. You know, I dress not to draw attention to myself. You know, I try to dress appropriately. Um, I maybe dress like I'm a little younger than I am and I'm never going to tell you how old I am because that's one of my rules. A lady never discloses their age. I'm 29 and holding and you can guess, but I'm never going to confirm or deny my age. But if you're going out there and you don't want that attention, then maybe look at yourself. And if you're really positive about your body, what does everyone else's opinion matter about anyway? It's about how you feel. I'm not saying what you should do or what you shouldn't do. That's not for me to say. That's your story. And that's your journey. I'm just talking about my, myself. You know, I've had blonde hair. I've had brown hair. I've had purple hair. I have naturally black hair and I'm back there. That suits me. So I've tried to kind of be on a road of self-discovery. You know, I wear a lot of black and my daughter teases me a lot about, you know, I need to bring color into my life. So if you see in the background, I do have color in my life. It's taken me a lot of years to be comfortable. I tried to conform. I tried to fit in. I tried to make people like me to gain acceptance, but it was difficult. I am not perfect. And you know what? That's okay. And so I've come a long way. And so for me being brave enough to expose myself to the world, I'm not quite brave enough to leave my house, which is ironic, but I'm okay enough to put myself out here and be open to feedback. I really don't care. There's nothing you can say to me that will hurt me that I haven't already said myself probably a 10 or a hundred times worse. So the people that are out here that think that I've had privilege, 
I really didn't see it like that. And maybe I was just misguided or I wasn't seen that way. It didn't occur to me that I might be able to have privilege like that. So when I applied for a job, you know, there's a study in this article that I can't quite get to scroll that says that there is a socioeconomic wage gap between people who are thinner and heavier. That didn't occur to me. When I applied for a job, yes, I dressed nicely, but what I did was sell myself. Okay, I think I have maybe possibly figured out how to get this screen to share. Hopefully. I don't know why it's being so difficult. I can't get it to scroll. Okay, there we go. I have to, okay, lesson learned. Okay, so I was talking about my experiences. So I didn't know that you could exploit certain things. You know, it never occurred to me that I can use my femininity to get things. I just was naive that way. It was always ingrained in me that you work hard, you will reap the benefits. If you want to make a lot of money, you work hard and set the example and earned it. So I maybe am of a different build than most. So maybe I've made my life harder than it needed to be. So I'm having a hard time and I want to understand and explore the differences in perceptions. Maybe that it's the time of life or maybe it really is about biases and judgments and the superficial opinions of others. So this article talks about the discrimination in healthcare, which I talked about a little bit earlier. Um, it talks about sexual assault. I think that happens for all of us. You know, I know that I've been single for a very, very long time and I've tried to figure out what's wrong with me. I, I don't get people that want to go out with me either. If I go out into a social setting, people don't um, approach me. And I've had the people that have only wanted me for one thing. I've done a couple of videos about, gosh, getting the random inappropriate photo or people who only want me for one thing. So it happens to all of us. So I don't know that it is because of someone's weight. I think it's just the way society is in this superficial world that we live in. You know, everybody wants to keep their options open. Nobody wants to commit. Um, dating has changed. And I am going to talk in some future videos about the, the really strange rules for dating apps and, and the differences that males and females look at things. So right now, um, I'm reading through here and I didn't consider about um, how certain people may experience certain things or their perception of things. But if you're living in an overweight body, you don't know what I'm going through if you've never been thin. Now, I was a little bit heavier as a child, but I can't say I 100% relate to what you're going through as an adult in this day and age as someone who's heavier. But what I did discover is I also don't like and feel comfortable with the way I look. Now, I'm getting better with it. And kudos to you, the people that are comfortable enough that are now considering themselves in the body positive movement that I'm apparently excluded from, which I disagree with. I, I think it should be more global. It's about feeling good and empowering um, within yourself and then finding like-minded people. But that's apparently something that I'm going to have to do some more soul searching about. I'm going to have to find a social group. I do have great friends. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, if I can share my story with the right people and not offend people, that's where I want to go with this. So um, I know that people jump to conclusions, you know, um, I know that people who have true disabilities um, come in all forms. I've learned a lot of ab about myself. You know, a lot of times you can't see the disabilities on the surface. A lot of things are internal, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and it would be unfair for us to judge. So marginalizing somebody based on their appearance is never going to be okay. It's no different than me judging somebody by 
the color of their skin, um, how much money they make, um, where they grew up, because we are all unique and different. And what we're doing is being so superficial, we're missing out on what could be getting to know some really amazing people. So I don't think I'm going to be able to change that, but I hopefully bring at least some dialogue to the table that people can relate to. Um, we have to be so careful and we have to choose our words. And it's so confusing. It would be so confusing in this day and age for a small child to make sense of anything, you know, from spirituality to, um, what they're taught, what they can't be taught. We're rewriting history because it's offensive. We don't know what to call each other. And we're making things so difficult. You know, the difficult things were when I was growing up is finding on a field trip, a pencil that had a name that was spelled correctly for me to buy. You know, we all wanted those things, right? Or um, figuring out what plans we were going to have. I was shy. So, you know, I was more waiting for the events to come to me and, you know, being disappointed when they didn't, but learning to be okay within myself, even though it was harder at times than others. Um, so I, it talks here about, we really want everyone to experience body liberation we have to put our own stories into context. You know, just because I'm thin doesn't mean life has been easy. Just because I'm thin doesn't mean I like the way I look. Sometimes I really, really don't. I really have avoided looking in the mirror because I really saw all of my flaws. Um, I'm not going to feel good about myself 100% of all the time. And sometimes people say hurtful things and it's up to me whether I want to internalize. And sometimes I do take those things to heart. You know, there's some truth into whatever we hear, but it's up to me whether I absorb it, make it ruin my day, or if I take it, maybe learn something from it and move on. Everything is an opportunity for, an, for education and room for improvement. So, You know, if people make jokes about me because I'm thin, and some people do, um, I remember being judged. When I moved back to the Midwest from California, my brother, God bless him, I love him, and he was honest. You know, I said, there must be something wrong with me. You know, I tend to attract these toxic people. Well, I've learned it's because I'm kind and because I'm what people perceive me to be fragile or exploitable. I'm really not. But... I tend to attract people that exude confidence and there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. So I tip my toe next to those narcissists and those psychopaths. And I was married to a monster. So that's a story that's going to be ongoing. So please do follow along. And that's going to be something that I really have to think through because I have stuffed it down so far that that's going to be a difficult thing for me to do. So my life hasn't been easy, but, um, People don't give me a chance for all the wrong reasons. I'm misunderstood. They look at the outside and don't give give me a chance to share my inside. They rush to judgment. You know, and I know we've all experienced that. You know, people gossip, they speculate, and if they don't know the truth, they're going to make it up. And I have been hiding because I wasn't ready to share. I also wasn't ready to one more time defend myself when I really didn't feel like I had to defend myself. I think that people have an impression based on some things they've heard or read that are incorrect. So I'm going to tell my story because it's mine to share. And that's where it gets me a little fired up. And I'm like, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent. But in this quest, you know, you may have a perception based on superficial things that your experiences are unique to you, but really in this day and age, they're, you, they're an experience by all, you know, when we're on a dating site, we're all getting the same messages. We're all not getting the second dates. Nobody's committing to anybody. Um, people are really self-centered. 
It's just a terrible day and age to be single seeking relationships. It's also a terrible day and age to be married. You know, there's a lot of different things that have played a factor in this. For example, you know, porn, COVID, social media. There's a thousand reasons why, but what we need to do is learn to adjust. We need to toughen up, good grief. You know, not be offended by everything. You don't like it, move on. If you don't like what I'm saying, don't watch. You don't like something in the movie, you turn it off and walk away. That's the good thing about streaming services. You don't like it, you move on. You don't like somebody that you're chatting with on a dating site, you respectfully move on. We're so quick to want the world to conform to our own selfish needs that we're missing a lot of opportunities. So I'm just trying to find my way here, folks. I don't know what direction to go in because there's just so much. And because I spent so much of my life working to avoid dealing with my own junk, that a lot of this stuff is new to me. All the phrases, the music, I didn't watch movies or see TV or news really for the last 20 years. So a lot of things are brand new to me, like phrases like body positivity. I was using it right according to what I knew it to be. And I was using it all wrong. You know, and I, um, I'm starting to be a little bit jaded and scared because what I thought would carry me in life really hasn't served me very well. So take a look. Let me know what you think. Um, I might be a little bit controversial. I might be set in my ways, but I'm open for a good debate. I want to create conversation because if we're not talking to each other, we're missing a rare opportunity. You know, singling people out, putting people in a box. We're never, ever going to move past this. We all have things that make us different. We're not going to agree about everything all the time. And that can be from politics to religion to upbringing to the economy. And that's okay. It keeps us open-minded enough to at least have open dialogue. So I'm not fat phobic. I don't look at people's weights. When I say that I look at people's auras, I really do. At the end of the day, I'm going to remember them, not what they look for. It's how they made me feel. And I hope that's the impression that I leave on others. That's what my friends who really truly know of me, they haven't believed the things that have been said about me. They have not rushed to judgment because they know me from the inside. They know what I would do for them. I am fiercely loyal and fiercely um, protective of the people that are important and near and dear to me. And I trust that the people that I've chosen to be in my circle are the same way. You know, we have a, a phrase, if anybody's in trouble, we could reach out and send a text message to our friend group that says dragonfly. We all know what that means. That means we need help. Somebody needs to come and save us. And I have people that would drive a very, very long way. And I would drive a very, very long way to help them. If, if that was needed. So let's get past this, folks. Let's talk about it. Let's stop letting um, our selfishness dictate our impressions of the world. We aren't going to change the world, but what we can do is change ourselves. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned because I got a story to tell.